Hello guys and welcome to this Volks Wizard video special. Now, today we're going to have a look at these two very impressive cars behind me, the Scirocco R280 and the Mark 7 Golf R. Both produce around 300 horsepower, both have got four-cylinder turbocharged engines, both cost around £30,000 new. And even on the second-hand market, the prices are very similar too. The big difference is that the Scirocco R280 is front-wheel drive and the Golf R is four-wheel drive. The other big difference is that the press really love the Mark 7 Golf R, but with the Scirocco there weren't really that many reviews and what reviews there were were very mixed. So I thought I'd make this video, decide once and for all which one I prefer. You of course can come along too and make your own decision because we all have different needs and different tastes. So without any further ado, let's start with the Scirocco. Okay, so this is one of the Scirocco facelift cars from around 2014 onwards. They redesigned a few bits and pieces, mainly the bumpers and the lights to make them look a bit more modern. The engine's a bit different, as we'll come to in a moment as well, but it's more of a rival for the Mark 7 Golf R than the pre-facelift car. So you get daytime running lights in the headlights instead of having them in the clumsy strips and the bumpers that the early cars had. You get uh, front and rear parking sensors, so that's just like the Golf R. You don't get adaptive cruise control, so there's no radar in the front bumper. In fact, you don't get any cruise control as standard, which is a bit of a pity. The front bumper's a bit less aggressive than it was on the earlier car, but it looks a bit more modern. You do get 19-inch alloy wheels as standard. Now, these are the Cadiz style, which originally came out with the Golf R. For some reason, they've decided to put them on as 19s on this car. I think in Germany, you could have the Golf R on 19-inch Cadiz, uh, but you couldn't hear, so they're the same style as the Golf R, just an inch bigger. They've even got the same tyres as the Golf R that we're testing this car against, even though it's got different wheels and is built in a different country, so Continental Sport Contact 23535 R19, so that's a match for the Golf R. Uh, silver mirrors, <laughs> yep, Golf R's got those. Uh, brake discs, hmm, well I haven't actually measured them, but I can tell you the calipers are a bit different. They've both got Golf R on the calipers, but the style's slightly different, so I imagine the brake discs are a bit different, but they're going to be very close in size. Uh, back brakes are vented, so similar spec to the Golf R. On this facelift car you've got the sexier rear lights, which have got like a... They're not really LEDs though, I think they're just uh, segments that illuminate in a very interesting way. You've got two exhausts, that's two down on the Golf R, but for many the oval shape like that is probably a bit more attractive than the somewhat overkill four exhausts on the, on the Golf you've got rear parking sensors. You've got these little vents in the back bumper now. They remind me of the ones on the new RS5 and RS4, but I can forgive them more on a car like this. I can't really forgive fake vents on a, on a 70 grand RS, but that's just me. On this later facelift car, we've got an actual uh, Volkswagen badge that's used as a boot opener, which there's no boot opener on the preface of Scirocco. And you've got a big boot, it's probably not as big as a Golf R, it's got probably one of the biggest load lips in all car history. You've got these humps on the parcel shelf which relate to the humps here on the roof, which I think is quite a nice touch that it shows that somebody's made a bit of effort there. Well, all in all, I think it's quite a good looking car and practicality wise it isn't massively different to, to a Mark 7 Golf R. It's a coupe, well, it's a lot more practical than a TT, which we know is a proper coupe, primarily because the roof on the TT is so much more raked than on this car. But, I don't know, it definitely doesn't look like a Golf to my eyes, it does pass as a coupe. It's quite a wide car, very broad shoulders, and that relates to the track. The wheels are actually wider apart on this than they are on the equivalent Golf Mark VI. It's the track width on these that makes these such a good car in the Volkswagen Racing Cup compared to the Golfs. They've actually had to design a body kit on the Golfs to make them to make them as wide as the Scirocco's to give them a level playing field. So don't underestimate the, the chassis on this car. It is really good. OK, let's have a look inside, see if we can ring the changes over the Golf in here. Now, what I do need to point out is that this car is completely standard. There are no options on it. This is what you get. On these facelift cars, they're very generously equipped, which is not the case with the Golf R, unfortunately. Um, even little things like this beautiful metal sill protector on the Golf R, that's just exposed paintwork. It's a real shame that they didn't put anything on there, but that just shows you that the 
accountants weren't so strict on this car. Uh, you've got leather with contrast stitching, which looks pretty similar to the Golf. You've got uh, contrast stitching on the mats as well, which I think is the same one as the Golf. You have got the very similar, if not identical, steering wheel. Although you don't get the cruise control controls on, the, on there because it hasn't got adaptive cruise. You've got a very similar but not identical infotainment screen. I'll just get in and we can have a look at that. So it's still 5.8 inch screen. It's just a bit different. I don't remember these SD cards. I think they're tucked away on the Golf. Plus you've got carbon fibre, like the Golf, on the side here, carbon fibre effects. Uh, it doesn't go into the door cards though, so it's piano black there. So piano black in the middle, carbon again on the side, and then piano black on the door card. I think it's a bit of a shame that on such a low roof car, so much of the screen is taken up with the mirror and the boost gauges and well, whatever other gauges they are. I think it's uh, lap timer and oil temperature. Uh, you get a black headlining. What's in the glove box? Not a lot. No, just an airbag switch and uh, air conditioning slot. You do get the media interface in the centre console there, which means you can connect your iPad. Uh, you do get phone, which is built into the head unit. There's no box under the seat like there used to be. And you get uh, DCC, dynamic chassis control. So the Golf gets phone, doesn't get nav, doesn't get DCC, doesn't get leather, doesn't get those brilliant gauges. And it does get an embossed R logo in the seat on the R, but this is actually stitched. So instead of just being pressed into the seat this is actually made of stitching which I'm pretty sure costs more to do. You still get paddle shifters when you've got the DSG Auto but I mean DSG is quite an expensive option on the Golf R and not that many cars have got it really. On this car you could have it for I reckon the same amount of money as the Golf R you could have DSG the same as the Golf R manual you could get a DSG Scirocco with all these bits and similar age and mileage. So, I think they're good value, but are they better? Well, that's for you to decide. So, got auto headlights. Yeah, it's a really quite pleasant place to be. Blue needles, same as a Golf. Uh, it's got the colour screen in the middle there as well, which is not to be taken for granted on a car like this. Okay guys, here we have the engine of the Scirocco R. It's uh, the older de design engine called the EA113. This goes back to the Mark V Golf GTI of 2004. It's a very tough engine. It's been used in the Audi TTS Mark II, the Golf GTI Edition 30. Actually, the Edition 35 has got pretty much the same engine as this as well. It's very reliable. It takes tuning quite well. So it's not a bad thing to have under your bonnet, but it is quite thirsty. The chain-driven engines used from the Mark VI Golf GTI onwards and in the Mark VII R as well are almost, I'd say, 20% more economical. So quite a difference if you're doing the mileage, but you might find that the reliability of this one makes up for that, especially as they get older. Only time will tell. Uh, it's, this is a seven-speed, sorry, six-speed DSG automatic car. You can probably maybe just about see the gearbox down there. One thing that does bug me about the Scirocco, and it's also true of the Tiguan and the new T-Rock and Skodas, pretty much all the way through the range, is that they've got this bloody dated bonnet stay. This was dropped on the Golf, I think from Mark III, when we went to Mark IV, we had telescopic struts. So there it is, it's a 280 horsepower in this facelift car. So that's 20 horsepower behind that of the Golf R. Um, but it should be a little bit lighter. In fact, I think even with the DSG gearbox, this car is a little bit lighter. Uh, the torque figures are 258 pound foot at 2300 to 5200 RPM. That's a very linear engine and it does 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds. Okay, so let's move on to the Golf R. This is a Mark 7 Golf R. It's a 2016 car, but it's pretty much identical to any Mark 7. There are some very minor spec changes, but they're all much of a muchness. You get the W daytime running lights. You get front assist and adaptive cruise control that use that radar there. That can be very expensive to put right if it does get damaged. You get front parking sensors. You get these glossy inserts in the bumper that are actually not as aggressive as they could have been, I think. It does look like a GT from certain angles, the Mark 7.5. 
looks a lot better in that respect, I think. Headlamp washers, but then it's got Xenon, so it will do. Uh, this car's got the 19-inch Pretoria wheels. These are called the lightweight RGMBH wheels, and uh, they are about £1,000 extra, and they come with 235-35 19-inch Continental tyres, exactly the same as the ones on the Scirocco. Uh, calipers are a little bit different in that they are stamped onto them on the Scirocco. It's like a plate you can clip on, and on different models it says different things. I'm pretty sure the brakes are a very similar spec. Uh, you get silver mirrors and puddle lights. This car's pure white, which was a few hundred pounds extra over standard. Only Tornado Red was standard. Uh, obviously rear parking sensors, because it's got fronts. LED lights, which you don't oddly get on the Golf R Estate. Those uh, famous four exhausts, which look very similar to the ones on the Mercedes C63 AMG. Let's have a quick look in the boots. Okay, yeah, it's a good boot, and uh, obviously you can fold the seats down, take parcel shelves out. The actual bottom of the boot is carpeted on this car, which it isn't on the Scirocco, and that, I think, was introduced for Mark 7. I, you don't see that very often on this, on a Golf. This car's got the additional cost rear privacy glass, so that's a little bit darker than standard. And yeah, as well as the wheels looking better because they're 19s, they just fill the arches better as well. You can, if you have a look in here, you can see that the black insert where the bumper's been extended to match the wheel arch liner, which is the same on every Golf. That's how much more of a flick the bumpers have got, and the wheels, these wheels seem to fill that a little bit better. Right then, let's have a look inside. Okay, so standard on the Golf R is this trim. It upset a lot of people when it came because they were expecting all this to be dark, like it is on the Mark 7.5. And some people got money off and M&S vouchers and all sorts because they weren't very happy with that. And yeah, now I've seen the Mark 7.5, I think I agree. It looks much better than this. Uh, you get electric folding mirrors. You don't get that on the Scirocco. I didn't say, sorry, you don't get those. Uh, you get this ambient lighting, which you don't get on the Scirocco. It's a nice touch. It's also in the sills there. And you get, again, a combination of piano black dash inserts and carbon fibre. Uh, you get a normal handbrake on the Scirocco, electric parking brake on this one. Backspace is a little bit bigger in this. You get three seats with three belts, so obviously it can seat three people legally. Alloy pedals are similar, the floor mats are similar. The seats do have contrast stitching, which looks like the... Stitching on the Scirocco's leather, I guess, but the leather would have been, in a, I think, 1,200 quid extra. And if you had the crazy carbon leather, that would have been is it two and a half grand extra. Insane. You don't get dynamic chassis control on this car, so the driver profile selection modes are pretty pointless, really. They don't do an awful lot. Uh, when you've got DCC, you can make the suspension harder and softer. Scirocco has got that. Uh, some leather in the door cards there. It's probably fake leather, which seems strange because there's no leather anywhere else. The infotainment screen is I think the same size as the Scirocco, it's a 5.8. Uh, it doesn't have navigation. If you're looking for cars with nav, uh, I think the sand button is nav when it's got nav. It has got Bluetooth though, so that's really useful. And uh, controls on the steering wheel for phone, trip computer, cruise control, because this car has got adaptive cruise, which some people will not live without. Now they've tried it, you can sit on the motorway and it controls the speed for you. So that's really good. Blue dials like the Scirocco, auto headlights, pretty boring, but we didn't used to get that a few years ago. Uh, front and rear parking sensors. Stop start, you don't get that on the Scirocco, so that saves you a bit of fuel. Uh, glove box. Yeah, the SD cards now have moved into this bit here on the Scirocco. They're kind of built into the head unit, so there is a difference there. Let's have a look under the bonnet. So we do have telescopic struts on this car, like every Golf since 1997, but let's not talk about that. Okay, so this is an EA888, EA888. It's basically a refined and more efficient version of the EA113 that's in the Scirocco. Uh, it's chain driven, so there's no need for a cam belt change every five years or 80,000 miles. And the way it performs is pretty impressive. It's very, very responsive engine it's uh, yeah much less lag than the earlier engine but there have been problems with turbo failures and a few other bits and pieces because i guess early drivers like me when i bought mine in 2014 were test driving them for volkswagen though mine was quite reliable but people on forums were complaining about water pump failures and turbo failures and a few other bits and pieces i just complained about the paint but there we go 
so this car's a 300 PS with 200, so 300, sorry, horsepower, 280 pound foot of torque. And it does uh, 0 to 60 in 5.1 seconds with a top speed of 155. So the top speed is the same as the Scirocco, but they're both probably limited anyway. And uh, they're both Euro 6 compliant. They must have done some serious work on the Scirocco to get that compliant, but uh, this is Euro 6 compliant, so a nice, modern, clean engine. And it is significantly better on fuel than the Scirocco. It's probably, I think this one's probably about 5 miles to the gallon better on average than the Scirocco. But you have to replace the turbo or, yeah, as I found, a clutch on this very car out of warranty. Well, a clutch is 1,200 quid, so a few MPG here and there isn't really a problem. OK, yeah, the driver was probably responsible for damaging the clutch on this car, but it didn't used to happen on the older cars, so something's going on. Anyway, there we have the Golf R. Now I think it's time to drive them. Hello guys and welcome to the 2015 Scirocco R. Now we're just going to do some normal humdrum driving now just to just to see how special the car feels because let's face it most drivers will be driving this car in a sedate way in traffic and doing the chores you won't be on a lovely B road giving it the beans all the time so it's important that when you are doing the day-to-day -day stuff that the car still feels a bit special and I think the Scirocco R does a pretty good job of doing that and it's not just because of the slightly dodgy gauges on top of the dashboard which, we, which are oil temperature uh, lap timer and boost gauge it's a very nice place to be it's got individual for the Scirocco door pulls which are a nice touch the dash vents are special for Scirocco as well so okay they're just standard on all Scirocco's but they still feel like somebody's made an effort and they haven't just used parts exclusively from the Golf 6 and I think this sort of facelift interior is the perfect combination because you've got the bigger 5.8 inch infotainment screen off the, off the Mark 7 and the switches down here are all much later but you've just got the solidity and the much nicer plastics of the Mark 6 and even the leather to my eyes looks better quality and it's just I think a nicer place to be. Does it sound any better when you're not giving it the beans? Well actually it's got I'm pretty sure that's got to be a fake sound actuator just like on the Mark 7. But it doesn't sound so Subaru-y, it just sounds like proper engine noise, a little bit louder. Refinement's pretty good. As I say, we're running in normal mode on DCC, so um, that's to keep a parallel with the Golf R, which hasn't got DCC, so that's in normal mode. And the ride comfort on these 19-inch wheels is pretty acceptable. In fact, it feels yeah, it feels really similar to the Golf R, so there's a bit of bobbing around, but it's not excessive. This is a completely different chassis to the Mark 7 Golf, so that's on an MQB platform. This is a PQ35 platform, and likewise the engines are different, even though they're similar. You can get a Cupra 280, which is the same horsepower as this. That's got the later TSI, which is changer than the EA888. This is an EA113. So yeah, this is a pleasant place to be, and... I, to me, this, this interior just feels so much more interesting than that in the, in the R. You've got special back seats with like um, headrests integrated into them. You've got a hump in the rear parcel shelf that matches the humps on the roof where the sort of roof hinges are. It's as if somebody's made an effort and I like it a lot. It does feel special. But does it drive anything like a Mark 7 Golf R? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's go to my secret test route uh, just by the A441 in Hopwood. Okay guys, time for a bit of dynamic driving of the Scirocco R. So I think a good place to start would be with a bit of a standing start. We're not going to launch, uh, control it. We're just going to give it the beans as if you would from traffic lights. So uh, there's nothing behind us. We're on continental tyres, same as the Golf R. So let's, uh, let's go. Okay, bit of wheel spin, but not too much. A bit of lag actually on the start there, and then into second, tiny bit of wheel spin, and uh, off we went. It wasn't too bad. The traction control engaged, and it managed it quite well. So we're just going to drop a couple of gears into third. It's quite a lot of water. Makes a great noise this car does. If that's fake, I'm quite happy with it. 
So again, we're in normal mode, so suspension's adaptive but set to its middle setting. Okay, the DSG gearbox is going to add to the sensation of speed, no doubt, but blimey. This car is a real thrill to drive. I want to do that again now, I really do. So, we're not going to floor it now on the start, we're just going to start second. So, a bit of wheel spin there. Third's fine, fourth fine. Body's a bit busy at that point. Into third for this corner. Traction, very good. There's a sense of the back end working with the front, which is uh, a bit like the Mark 7. It's not surprising because the Mark 5 Edition 30 is basically the same platform as this, and that's got a lovely chassis as well. So I'm not sure the Golf Art gets much on this, but even the traction seems pretty good. I really enjoyed that. I do want to do it again, but I can't because I've got to go and start talking about the Golf R now. So let's move over to the Golf R. Hello guys and welcome to this Mark 7 Golf R. Now as with this Scirocco, we're going to start off by driving it pretty sedately, see if the car exudes any degree of specialness that makes it a pleasure to be in, even when you're not driving it flat out, because let's face it, that's how most of us will be driving these cars, those B-road blats on a Sunday morning before everybody wakes up are a bit of a pipe dream for most people. It's going to the shops, going to the tip, going to pick up the kids and all that stuff. So let's see how we get on. now. I've just noticed there are not an awful lot of badges that say R in this car. We've got one on the steering wheel. Um, there's a couple of embroidered things on the seats here. Actually, they're not even embroidered, they're embossed. And that's a bit of a shame. You know, there's nothing on the glove box, which I'm quite surprised about, actually. I have to double check that, but no, it's not there. There's nothing else here to say R. We've got blue dials on the Speedo. That's quite a nice touch. Scirocco's also got that. The steering wheel's nice. Yeah, it's got piano black on it as well. It's got buttons for the adaptive cruise and the trip computer and the audio. It's got a flat bottom, but again, it's pretty standard Mark 7 Golf Fair, I think. We do have R on the key, though, on this. I don't think the Mark 6 gets that, so that's a sign they've actually tried a bit harder with this car. Um, obviously, alloy pedals, which the Scirocco's also got. But no, nah, it's not really particularly, obviously, special, unfortunately. Uh, it doesn't even sound that brilliant. We're in normal mode, so the sound actuator's in its middle setting. Yeah, I mean, it's trying, isn't it? But I just don't know why they couldn't make this car sound better without faking it, to be honest. Uh, so it's got to be pretty good dynamically to make up for that deficit, for me personally, anyway. So the only way to find out if it is, is to go to the secret test route just off the A441 near Hopwood. OK, guys, here we are on my special little test route. It's not a long road, this, but it does have a variety of things on it in a very short time. So. If you remember in the Scirocco R we started from standstill, we just let the electronics do its bit, didn't use launch control, but I've got to do some work in this one, so let's go. I'm not going to ruin the clutch, so... My God, it's savage, this engine. It's definitely got a sharper response than the one in the Scirocco, which are the E8113. It's fierce, and I think it does probably need four-wheel drive simply because of the response. I've got to say, I feel a lot more keyed to the ground in this car. Even though we're running passive dampers that are a little bit firmer, it doesn't seem to upset it too much. I don't think it's anything to do with four-wheel drive, though, because that only works when you're really spinning the front wheels. Yeah, <laughs> it's really capable, but it's really hard to explain that it doesn't have the thrills. I think when a car's closer to the limit and closer to putting you through the hedge, you tend to, well, you get more of a thrill from it. And surely that thrill should be, if you get it at a lower speed, makes it more fun. On that note, let's do that again anyway and consider it in a minute. So into second, it does really want to go to the rev limit of this car. Fantastic response. 
they were in third. The road is awful, but this blimey. I don't think it's the four-wheel drive that makes it so poised. It's more that the fact the chassis works so well front and rear. So the front wheels aren't really doing as much work as they would be in a less well set up car. Well, there we have it guys, the Mark 7 Golf R is an absolutely devastating tool on a greasy British B road in the middle of winter. The Scirocco R was really good, but it just couldn't live with this car. This was just much grippier, much more stable, just a, just a more composed car altogether. The thing I can't get out of my head though was that the Scirocco was so bloody exciting. It was a real thrill to throw it down that greasy road with its two wheel drive, and I absolutely loved it. This much more capable yes but it didn't thrill and for me a car should thrill and if it thrills at a slower speed than this car then that's got to be a better thing because that's what we want we're not setting times I'm not timing myself on that road I'm just trying to get excitement from the thrill of driving and the Scirocco R I've got to say offered it more readily that's not to say the Golf R is a bad car it's a tremendous car it's got a really good following and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who don't like my verdict because you know they're brilliant cars but until you've driven one back to back with a Scirocco R it'd be hard to understand why the Scirocco R was so good anyway if you've enjoyed this Volkswagen video please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe for more there'll be a lot more to come and uh, see you for the next one soon cheers